Hey what's up everybody, Trofinet here and welcome back to Quent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Quent cards or interesting decks to play around with. As you all surely know, the Crimson Curse expansion to the game is great. It adds over a hundred new cards, a new leader for every faction and a slew of new mechanics to keep in mind. Instead of just talking about the new leaders however, I want to talk about some cool new deck ideas combining a lot of the new cards with a new leader in every episode of this show. Most of these will be viable in both seasonal and ranked play, but all of them have a certain fun factor to them as well. I always try to put an overall theme to each deck I compose, and today's deck is no exception. Today we'll talk about the Undying Monster deck. Since Detlaf is the poster child of the new expansion, I felt like it suited us to start with him as the base of this first deck. The Undying deck is all about vampires and their incredible resilience and reluctance to die. Detlaf as a higher vampire is the ideal leader to this deck. His leader ability allows you to deal 1 damage on any unit on the field and if you kill it, so on death blow, you get a bristling 2 power Akimara on your side of the field. I actually delayed this video because they nerfed both incarnations of Detloff last week, messing with my planning a bit and I needed to rework the deck for this to work as well. Detloff's leader ability can possibly result in 9 points if all of his hits kill enemies, but that on its own is not much. He originally dealt 2 damage, but because this constituted heavy removal possibilities, according to CD Projekt Red, he was nerfed to only deal 1 damage each time. So this sadly also limits his potential, but hey, it is what it is. I however do not see the difference with Krach being able to deal 1 damage 8 times during a match, but hey, that's just me. But enough about our pretty straightforward but charismatic leader, let's talk about the deck itself. As you can see in the deck composition here, the Undying deck is the love child of a basic Deathwish deck and my Dead Bugs deck from a while back. It combines some straightforward damage dealers and Deathwish abilities with the resurrecting power of Ruin and the new Deathlove Higher Vampire unit, finishing off with some other powerful vampires for seasoning. This gives you both some removal options and a few powerful engine loops focusing on singular high power units. How you play this deck depends on your opponent. In general, I try to get a Slizzard on the board if I expect the opponent will not be able to destroy it in one go. Slizzards are really handy to continuously consume your Deathwish units, such as the Rock Fiends and the Bridge Troll, and your Resurrectors, Ruin and Deathloff himself. If your opponent plays a dangerous engine unit, however, don't hesitate to flip to a more offensive stance. Your biggest removal options in this case are the Arc Spores, Rot Fiends and the Cyclopses most of all, and of course your leading ability. But all of that is the base loop. Great if you can keep it going, but aside from Ruin and Deadlaugh, it's not using our other golden cards just yet. Let's talk about the other combos you can pull off with this deck. Karantir is a favorite of mine in any monster deck. You can copy one of your Resurrectors or duplicate k in case you have a few of those on the field already. A few of Resurrectors, I mean. k can still consume three targets immediately, making it invaluable to profit from Ruin and Deadlaugh. That Love Higher Vampire has sadly also been hit with a nerf. But, like Ruin, he resurrects automatically when he dies, so when he is destroyed. The difference is that Ruin only resurrects at the end of your turn, with no limit on the amount of resurrections, while that Love resurrects immediately on destruction, but can only resurrect twice, down from thrice before the nerf. This gives that Love a point potential of 15 instead of the 20 from before the nerf, but it's a lot easier to pull off than getting 15 points out of Ruin, which would need 3 resurrections and therefore 3 turns for the same effect. Whispering Hillock can again be used to duplicate Ruin, but with Deadlove you now also have a second target. Duplicating Deadlove with Karantir also allows you to use your leader ability on the weakened vampire to immediately get a resurrect and an extra Akimara on the field. Speaking about vampires, we left them out of the discussion for now, but most of the new monster cards in the Crimson Curse expansion are feral and less feral bloodsuckers. The Katakan is a 6 power tribe unit that also spawns an extra Akimara, which it does again when it dies. The tribe part is pretty useless in our deck, but more vampires is never a bad thing. The biggest vampire specific unit combo is Oriana, the charismatic orphanage warden from the Blood and Wine expansion with a taste for blood, 
causes bleeding to an enemy with a duration equal to the amount of allied vampires. If you play her on the ranged row, she is also boosted by the amount of bleeding enemies in return. To complement this a bit, you have Plumerts. They are weak, small vampires but deal 2 or 4 turns of bleeding to an enemy, which Oriana can benefit from as well. Finally, the Queen of the Night can deal 4 turns of bleeding or purify an allied unit, which clears all statuses including lock, bleeding and poison. The coup de grace of this deck, however, is the Crimson Curse itself. Playing this special card is tricky, but can turn the tide tremendously in your favor. When played, you need to destroy an allied unit. A Blood Moon row effect is then applied to both of your rows for a duration equal to the destroyed unit's power. Blood Moon is not exactly new, since it was a lot more prevalent in the beta, but it has been tweaked since then. Blood Moon boosts a random vampire on that row by 2 at the start of each turn. I would have liked CD Projekt Red to change this to the end of each turn, because now you need to wait a turn for your enemy to react to what you've just done, so he could potentially destroy your vampires on the board before they get boosted. But to fully benefit from Crimson Curse, you should destroy a unit of at least 4 power as soon as possible during a round. That Love himself is a perfect candidate for this, since he resurrects immediately, benefiting from the boost as well. Another good candidate is the Katakan, since he is replaced by Akimaras as well once he dies. Just make sure you have a vampire on both rows at the end of each turn to keep the vampire boost train going. This deck is even more powerful in the current season of the Elves mode, which duplicates your entire deck on start. Having double the amount of resurrecting power means you can steamroll most opponents as long as you get a few turns to get set up. Using a small army of Rot Fiends and other Deathwish units can help in making your opponent reluctant to attack in the first place. Once you have a consume loop going, Vran Warriors are almost too OP since you can set up multiples and the chance of you killing an enemy is actually higher as well. It's awesome to see a couple of 4 provision units wreck half your opponent's board because you consumed some random unit. In ranked, this deck is still viable, but a lot of the more established archetype decks can often counter your most important strategies. Overall, I just like this deck because of how quickly things can escalate if your opponent is too worried about their side of the board instead of yours, especially in seasonal. So I would suggest that you just try it out and let me definitely let me know what you think, because I'm really curious about your opinion as well. So definitely, got any other tips on how to play the new cards added in the monster faction? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. That's what we're here for. If you have any other suggestions for videos, don't hesitate to leave that in the comment section as well. And I have a lot of new deck ideas ready, so expect more of this type of videos in the near future. Check me out on Twitter under at TrophyNet if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really, really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!